before we talk about the wavelet transform, let us understand why we need the frequency information. Given that we have a very high resolution when it comes to time. So for time domain, we have a very good resolution here, but we don't have any information about the frequency content. So the frequency domain is needed here so that we can learn further about our signal, extract some useful information from it. The frequency domain representation of a signal or of a uh, data uh, signal is just a time series. Let's say here the frequency domain representation of a time series allows you or allows us to observe several characteristics of the signal that are either not easy to see in the time domain or not visible at all when you look at the signal or time series. Okay, we cannot say anything about this. Uh, about the frequency contents of the signal looking at these plots, okay, or at this plot here. For instance, frequency domain analysis become, becomes useful when you are looking for a cyclic behavior of a time series. The, the technique to get this frequency information is to use some transformation. And there are several transformations the most known one or the very well the very well known one is the Fourier transform. And I believe most of you is familiar with this equation. So this is the equation of the Fourier transform. The input or let's say this is my signal and this is my Fourier transform. So what does the Fourier transform? Split the signal into sine waves with different frequencies or at different frequencies. So what we get after applying this Fourier transform, we get something like this. It looks like the time domain representation, but what we have here in this time, we have the frequency in the X axis, okay? What we have now, we have a high frequency resolution, okay? This is very high frequency resolution, but we have zero information about time. We have zero information about the time here. And we also want to extract both information from the data. I, I, I want both the time information and the, and the frequency information from the signal. How we can get into that? So we can actually split the signal or divide it into small segments we call windows. These segments, we can call them win. We get them by applying some window in. Okay. So we're going to get a segment here. And after that, we apply the Fourier transform. So what we are doing here, we are doing like a local Fourier transform. This technique is called STFT or short time Fourier transform. This time is not a one dimensional function, but it has two variables the time information and the frequency information. And this is the equation. If you can look at this here, the new thing we have in this equation is the window function. So this is the only difference we have when we compare the STFT with the FT. Okay. So what we get, we get since this is a, a function with two variables, the representation of it is just like an image. We call it spectrogram or magnitude spectrogram. OK. So we have the time always here and it's fixed the size of the window. This is the same. OK. And the frequency also is fixed. So we cannot like decide that I want more resolution here and the same for the for the for the frequency or the same for the time. So it's like the resolution is a trade-off. Time resolution is constant and the frequency resolution is a trade-off. So this is the scalogram obtained by running a code in MATLAB on a signal with two frequency components. So STFT works perfectly for stationary signals. A stationary signal is the is a components persist during or or 
over the time. So uh, an example here is a sine wave. So how, how we can get control over the resolution of the time or frequency? Scientists found a way to do what we call the multi-resolution analysis. So the, re the resolution here is changing. It is not the same when it comes to frequency and also for the time. So the wavelet transform decomposes signal data using very short like waves called wavelet. So the difference between wavelet transform and STFT is that the wavelet transform use what we call the wavelet that are very localized in the time. As you can see here, I have this animation here. So this is a wavelet and what we do here, we convolve the signal with it at different scales and time translations or time locations, okay? And this is the equation of it, okay? B, uh, we call it the translation or shifting, and A, we call it the translation parameter, uh, sorry, the scale parameter, okay? What we get when we apply the wavelet transform? Again, this is, this is a, a function of two variables. So if I want to represent it, I will get something like this. And this is the magnitude scalogram. So looking at this plot here, or uh, at, this, at this image here, you can see that for time, for the time at low frequencies, I have very low resolution. But this resolution is increasing, is increasing. So, and it will, it will be narrow, let's say, when we are looking at the high frequencies. And for the frequencies, it's very high for low, frequency, low frequencies. I'm talking here about the resolution. It's very high for, for low frequencies, but it gets lower when we move forward to the high frequencies. So this is an example of magnitude scalogram. There are two types of wavelets. We have the continuous, this is the one, this is continuous, and we, ha we have another one called discrete wavelet transform. We're gonna see another slide talking about these two types of wavelet transform, but now let's compare the wavelet transform with the STFT. This is a non-stationary signal. Sorry for this error here. This is a non-stationary signal. If we apply the Fourier, the, the, the Fourier transform or the short time Fourier transform, we get the magnitude STFT. This is a hyperbolic chirp and it has two components. Looking at the spectrogram, we cannot resolve the, these two components either in time or in frequency. But looking at the wavelet transform, representation or the scalogram, I can see clearly that we have two components here. So what we can say about the wavelet transform and the STFT for non-stationary signal, wavelet transform analyzes signal at different frequencies with different resolution, or what we call the multi-resolution analysis. Wavelet transform is the best choice for analyzing transient signals or for detecting transient signals in a real world time series, okay? And the wavelet transform offers simultaneous localization in time and in frequency domain. Let's now look at the types of wavelet transform. Wavelet transform can be classified into two broad classes, the continuous wavelet transform and the discrete wavelet transform. Here I have this table here where I'm comparing them according to the equation and the applications. These are some applications that I added to this table, but believe me, there are multiple application, application of that uses or that use the wavelet transform. So what is the difference exactly between them? The only difference here is that the wavelet, the discrete wavelet transform use a discrete scale instead of a continuous scale. Why we need this? Because if we, calculate this, and when it comes to the implementation, it requires a lot of computation because we are looking at different scale and the interval between these scales is very small. So when we discretize the, the scale, 
we are getting almost the same information as the as the continuous wavelet transform, but we have less computation. Looking now at the application applications of each of these wavelet transforms. So the applications of the continuous wavelet transform. So when we want to do high resolution analysis of non-stationary signals, it's always recommended to use the continuous wavelet transform, but you can also use the discrete wavelet transform if you don't care about the resolution. Before that, for the continuous wavelet transform, we have feature extraction. You can use you can use the CWT for feature extraction. Here I'm talking about this getting the scalograms. Okay, and these scalograms can be saved as a data set, and uh, after that, use it to train or to fit some machine learning model. And for the DWT, this is the equation, and this is always the wavelet. The applications are various when it comes to DWT. We can use it for the analysis, for signal and image denoising, for signal and image decompression, for feature extraction, for signal separation, and many other applications. Okay, the CW and the DW transforms differ in how do they discretize the scale parameter. There are some basic guidelines for deciding on, on whether to use a discrete or continuous wavelet transform, and this depends on the application you want to achieve. Let's now go to MATLAB and deepen our understanding of the wavelet transform by running some code and using some application to analyze the signal using wavelet transform. But before that, compare the WT with the STFT, okay? And learn a little bit about the wavelet families, okay? I'm sharing now my MATLAB. I have demos here. And we can actually start by, by by this, this small demonstration. Okay, here I'm just creating a sine wave. Okay, and plotting it. So this is a sine wave. We can we can we can see here that the sine wave is not localized in time. It means that it keeps um, going over the time. Okay. Let's now see how the wavelets look like. I'm generating here a Debussy and using this function called wave pen. Okay. This is a way to generate or to plot wavelets. Okay. And this is my db4 wavelet function. You can look at these guys and see that it's really localized in time and this is one of the advantage of using wavelets instead of sine waves okay another example here is the morelet this is just another wavelet okay and here this is the equation of it and again if we are if we if we look at the plot here, we can see that it's very localized in time. When I say localized, it's a spark signal when visualizing it in time domain or when we look at it from the time domain perspectives. Okay. It's zeros. It's almost zeros, but non zero for some interval in time domain. So the figure below make it clearer. Okay, looking at different plots, the wavelet is very well localized in time. Hence, when it multiplies by the signal, the information of that parts of the signal will be extracted. So this is just a comparison between the sine wave and the wavelets, and why the wavelet transform is efficient when it comes to detecting information a different resolution. Let's now close this and co compare the transforms. What we're gonna compare here? We're gonna compare the wavelet transform with the Fourier transform, okay? But we will do that for 
stationary signal and non-stationary signal or what we call dynamic signals. Okay. The first part here I'm just generating, or let's say this is just the parameters of the signal that I'm going to generate. After that, I'm using this control here that I created from this panel. Okay. This is the one I'm using. Okay. Just to switch between sta stationary signal and dynamic uh, dy dynamic signal. So uh, let's see the code. So we have two sections here. One for stationary signal and one for dynamic signal. This is a synthetic signal that I'm generating. In real world, you will have signals that most of them are dynamics. Let me run this. So what we are looking at now is a dynamic signal. OK, a dynamic signal is also called non stationary signal. It is basically a signal that its frequency components, at least one component. Don't persist over time. A very good example of this dynamic signal is a shear signal. Let's now move to the analysis of this signal. We can analyze it in Fourier uh, domain using the, but this is just a plot. This is the analysis in time domain. We are just looking at the signal in time domain. And if you want to perform the Fourier analysis, I can use the function called P, P, P spectrum. This is a function that you can use either for the spectra, as we we're going to see here. This is the spectra of the signal. I have four components. If you go back to this signal, these are the four components, frequency components. OK, it plots also the resolution of frequency. It's five hertz in this case, but we want to learn about both information, time and frequency, so we can actually plot this or uh, visualize the spectrogram using the same function. But you need to specify this time, the type of the spectrum you want. OK, guys, so it's basically the same function, but this time we specify the, the output, which is in this case the spectrogram or the magnitude spectrogram. And as you can see, it tells you about the frequency resolution and also the time resolution. OK, so this is for the spectrogram. Looking at the spectrogram, we are getting the components here. The spectrogram is good. It's showing the information about this non stationary signal. OK, but we still um, have in here some frequency content. So this is the discontent which is I have in my signal. The spectrogram is telling me, OK, you have some frequency content for for the whole frequency range. And this is not true. OK, so the spectrogram here is not able to resolve or is not able to detect the discontinuities of in this signal. And also it is not resolving the the frequency component properly. OK, let's see now the continuous wavelet transform. There, there, there is this command called CWT, which means continuous wavelet transform. So it computes the scalogram, the magnitude scalogram, and also plots it. What you need to pass as arguments, input arguments, the signal that you want to analyze, and the wavelets. I'm using here morphs. And also you can pass, and this is this is again not required, this is optional. If you don't use it, the if you don't have the time notion or the frequency sampling, you can just pass the signal and the wavelets. Let me run this. And here we go. This is the magnitude scalogram. We can see here clearly the the different components, frequency components, and the distant discontinuities. It, it is still there because the continuous wavelet transform or or STFT will not remove this. Uh, these discontinuities, but we want to see them. We want to analyze the signal and say, OK, I have some discontinuities here. So using the continuous wavelet transform, we can clearly detect the discontinuities, but also the 
frequency content does it have in my signal? OK. Another way to do this analysis or to compare is to use the signal anal analyzer app. So here um, I will I will be analyzing this hyperbolic shear, but this time using this signal analyzer app. So this app can be found either here. I will have it in my favorites, but you scroll down to signal processing and communications apps family. OK, and there you find signal analyzer app. It must be somewhere here. OK. So this is signal analyzer app. That allows you to do um, time analysis, frequency analysis and time frequency analysis using waveless or scale uh, or uh, STFT. And it allows you also to fine tune the parameters of the wavelet transform or the STFT spectrogram. The workflow is as follow. You open the app, you will see that you have in the workspace browser the time series or the signals. Then you drag it to, to this window here. You select it and you plot it in time domain. This is the signal in time domain. Then I want to visualize the time frequency analysis. So you have two choices here. You can select from or two options. The first one is. This is the uh, spectrogram. And it doesn't tell me a lot about the two components I have in my signal. It is not able to resolve them. I can now maybe change some few parameters here. The leakage mainly because it tell me about the overlap and all these things. OK, but still I'm not able to resolve these two components. Let's go back to the display tab and this time select the scalogram. Here we go. Look at these two components here. They are clearly resolved. OK, and this is the power of the wavelet transform because it does this multi resolution analysis. It looks at the frequency. At different resolution and also the time at different resolutions. OK, so this 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 app can be used actually to do some quick analysis in time domain in the uh, frequency domain but also in the time and frequency domain. OK. Let me close this. I don't need to save it. So this is a, a comparison between the STFT and the wavelet transform for the analysis of dynamic signals. OK. As I said before, I have here two uh, type of signals. Now we can, for example, select the stationary signal and we're going to see that. OK. I need to run this section before. Then. OK. This is now a stationary signal. An example here is a, is a sum of sine waves. OK. And let me show this spectrogram. Yeah, the spectrogram or the SFT works pretty good for the stationary signal. You can see that it's not that clear, but if you keep uh, tuning the parameters, you can maybe get the frequencies resolved. OK, this is using the STFT. We can do the same for the wavelets and the wavelets still are always winning this race and it's always giving good results. OK. So what we have learned, we learned that the wavelet transform works for stationary signal, non-stationary signals, and it does the multi-resolution analysis of the signal, and this is the main advantage of it. That's why we are resolving different frequencies here in this non-stationary signal and stationary signal. So this for comparison between STFC and wavelet transform. Let's look now at 
the types of the wavelet transform. So this is some some theory again. We call this this is the equation. We call this a the scale, but we are talking about time frequency domain. So where is this where is this frequency aspects here? Actually, it's there, okay? Because there is an equation that allows you to convert the scale into frequency, okay? And MATLAB um, makes it very easy. There is a function here called scale to freq, okay? So you can, you can use this to convert scales to frequencies. And the command that you can use for wavelets, continuous wavelet transform, we saw it before, but I'm still going to run this and show you what is actually uh, the coefficient that returns a wavelet transform or continuous wavelet transform. So this is, it returns like a matrix and it's complex because this is, this is the, this is the, yeah, this is the wavelet function and it's, uh, it's introduced this complex number or complex effects to our uh, scalogram magnitude. Now it's not the magnitude, but it's just the matrix of the scalogram that we can uh, use to extract the magnitude, but just using the command apps. We can use maybe the command apps here and they will pass the wavelet matrix. So if we plot this, we're going to get something similar to the magnitude scalogram. I can maybe use image. And. Apps. Then. I believe we need to use the other function. OK, let's see this. Yeah, we are getting almost similar, but this is a plot that we get after many um, tuning of the axis of the of the annotation and so on so but in the end this is something similar okay this is just to show you what we get from this from running this command we have outputs we have the matrix which is the wavelet transform matrix and we have the frequency vector okay moving now to discrete wavelet transform uh, this is the equation that we saw before. M is the scale and N is the translation. Both are discrete. OK, so before I mentioned that we only discretize the, the, the scale, but also the, 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 the translation. We don't implement this transform like they are. We are always discretizing because machine doesn't understand this continuous aspects okay we need we need to discretize them but n is discrete is discrete also for the continuous wavelet transform and there are multiple ways to implement dwt okay one of them is to look at the signal from a frequency perspective or from a, a frequency window and what we do actually we split the signal into it's low uh, frequency parts and again into high high pass or high frequency content okay and then we down sample until we get what we call the approximation coefficient and from the high pass part we get the detail coefficients okay the common to do that in matlab is dwt but there are many other wavelets, uh, discrete wavelets transform implementation. And MATLAB has many uh, functions that you can use for this purpose. And the difference will be mostly in the implementation and the way these people, they implement that uh, discrete wavelet transform. But I'm going to use just the one that's, that is very well known, the DWT. And what we get, we get these approximation coefficients and detail coefficients. Okay, let me run it. Here I'm I'm just plotting here to show you that we can use these 
the WT together with its inverse. And we didn't talk about the inverse of wavelet transform. So the same as the wavelet transform, uh, the same as the Fourier transform, for the uh, wavelet transform, we have also an inverse an inverse uh, version of it. So um, what I did here, I just reconstructed the signal, the noise I did. I used an original signal here. This is the original signal, and I reconstructed it based on IWT. Now the wavelet families. There are multiple uh, motherlets. They call it motherlets. Some they call it fan, uh, base, basis function. Some they call it fatherless. <laughs> so there are multiple uh, names. I'll call it just wavelets function. Okay. As I said, we have many functions and how to pick the function or the wavelet function for your analysis or for your application is to have some knowledge of what you want to do exactly. And let me run this command here, wavelet families. This is a command that will print the different wavelet functions. Continuous wavelet, we use MORS, we use MORLETs. For this discrete wavelet transform, we use the SIMLET, okay? And it has different versions, or let's say variants, okay? So this, this is the difference between continuous wavelet transform and uh, discrete wavelet transform from a MATLAB perspective, at least from the, uh, by running the commands and looking at the outputs of these functions or these wavelet transforms. Uh, we use wavelet continuous wavelet transform usually for the analysis for high resolution analysis. We use the discrete wavelet transform for the noise and for the for compression, uh, for signal separation and so on. Okay. So that was all for the types of wavelet transform and for the introduction to wavelet transform.